No, many thanks for the invitation. I think it's quite difficult uh, uh, for me to speak out of two reasons. First of all, to speak after Jean and after this overview of the global challenges in which we are uh, is extremely difficult because Europe is only uh, a part, a small part of it. Uh, and second, I think to be the last speaker is also always a problem. Uh, so far, I'm asking for your forgiveness. The third point I want to mention, I'm not standing because uh, my stability, uh, by my physics, uh, is not really existing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are too, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even a faction. Uh, yeah. Solidarity. Solidarity. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, solidarity will be a part of my <laughs> explanations here, uh, for sure. Uh, may I say, it's an interesting uh, question which is uh, raised here. Which Europe do we need uh, for the future? In the current situation, even I may say, do we need Europe for the future? Uh, that's a real question which is for sure existing. I think this is a big shift uh, uh, of uh, the question, of the challenge, uh, of the paradigm about uh, Europe for sure, which should be clear. The difference between you and me, uh, I'm a little bit older, and so far I went to several Europes. Uh, I started in a very horrible time of Europe during the Second World War, uh, where it was a kind of self-destroying uh, for Europe for the second time. The first one happened uh, with the First World War, uh, without any doubt. And even it's sometimes strange, uh, in my country we are celebrating 100 years of the end of the First World War, but it is also the celebration of the end of the Danube monarchy, <laughs> which is not mentioned. It is really interesting. Uh, we are only speaking about 1918, where the Republic was founded. Uh, about the heritage we had before, we are not speaking. But even, I may say, partly the heritage we have at the time before is more important as was the, uh, the Republic has achieved. There's no criticism on the Republic because we are a smaller country after the Danube monarchy. Uh, and so far, it's extremely difficult for a self-understanding, and it is also a political subject. Uh, I started in the Second World War, getting uh, by information by my parents and to the friends of my parents and so, and so on, uh, what the Nazi time really meant. Uh, I think I jumped in in a re-established Austria, uh, step by step, getting the impression it's improving and nobody spoke about Europe uh, in this time because the question was, have we enough to eat? Uh, reconstruction, uh, building of uh, new houses after the bombing and so on and so on. And then uh, we got after 10 years the freedom of the four allies, uh, they left Austria uh, and then there was an idea, we are back. There. Uh, it was set back in Europe but it, uh, so at the same time we had to register, uh, it was really only a part of Europe. Because quite close to Vienna, only 60 kilometers eastwards and uh, 80 kilometers northwards, there started the Soviet Empire. And it was not understood as Europe at this time. It was Soviet Empire, some of those are a little bit critical. It's an extension of Asia or something like that. Uh, even in literature, Joseph Brodsky, uh, a very famous uh, Russian writer, was saying uh, Russia is not Europe, Russia is Western Asia. Here you can see the difficulties existing. And my generation, and even not my parents out of different reasons, but uh, I think the majority of the Austrians had no knowledge about the neighborhood. Even by the past of the Danube monarchy, of a lot of relatives, uh, migration, and so on and so on. Uh, but it ended. It ended here, three kilometers uh, from here, but on the other side. Uh, here it was the end. And as I came uh, with my car here on the way, uh, I saw even still the symbol of the situation it was the watchtowers along the Hungarian border, which are still standing here uh, on this uh, Geschriebenstein. Uh, uh, written stone uh, in English. Yeah. yeah. And in Hungarian? Uh, 
Irad came. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think the hotel is a little bit also Eastern minded. <laughs> but this is another question. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Uh, saying so. It was a cultural difference, without any doubt. Uh, and uh, just to tell you uh, a nice story uh, of my experience being a youngster, uh, my mother was very family minded, and the bigger family had to do every six weeks uh, a common walk. Uh, it was in the Wienerwald, Vienna Woods, for sure, but my father was always fed up about this. <laughs> but he was not allowed to criticize it, uh, obviously. Therefore, he was saying, as I was so young as you to me, we went uh, by the uh, uh, Pressburger Bahn, uh, that's a railway leading to Bratislava. Uh, in, in, uh, it's a tram. The uh, Slovaks said, Videnska Električka. Uh, this was a translation, and it was extremely famous. And she said, and we went there, we got the coffee and the chocolate and so on. And my mother was extremely angry always. You know, we have to wait for a visa and stand in front of the embassy. Uh, if we are coming there, we are controlled uh, by the customs officer, or by the police here. Uh, and if we are coming to Bratislava, there's no coffee and no chocolate. <laughs> I think this was my experience of Europe. And it was really not named Europe. Uh, there was a contrast program because my family is coming out of the construction business uh, and uh, they were all working uh, on the field of the monarchy and so far at the family meetings, which we had also, everybody was telling what he did in the past. Uh, a villa for the fa fa uh, family of Dreher, that does not say anything to you, it was a famous family uh, owning breweries. They are still existing if you are coming to South Tyrol. Biradreha. I think that's the last of, it, last of it what is left. Uh, and another one was uh, working at the Opera House in Odessa. If you are coming to Odessa, it's really outstanding. Uh, it was uh, by one arch architecture office uh, done. They built 42 theaters, opera houses and so on and so on, all over Europe. And so far, I get a certain feeling by the stories from uh, uh, my relatives. Uh, there's a bigger uh, space here uh, with some connections. So that was it. Uh, I think then, step by step, by the development of the uh, European uh, community, of the economic community, there's something in Europe, and they are trying to come together, and so on and so on. And uh, being a youngster, being a student, and being very much engaged, I think it was extremely impressive. And my generation became convinced Europeans. Uh, we didn't know exactly what it really is, uh, because the division between West and East uh, was quite impressive still, uh, and we could see the difficulties. I was several times invited to come to Berlin. They had uh, very good actions inviting youngsters going to West Berlin, showing this is a free part of Europe and so on and so on. And then we were climbing up and looking to the other side and seeing the, the contrast program. Uh, step by step, I think uh, even the so-called neutral Austria uh, got a message, I think uh, we should be connected with other parts of Europe. Uh, and uh, it was also a time where the view, especially to the economic conditions of Europe, were growing up. And so far there was a tendency, Austria shall be a part, besides the fact that they are neutral. By the way, those who are knowing uh, the situation, neutrality plays in Austria not anymore a role. Sometimes as an argument to be against something. Uh, but the content of neutrality is not even known. I think there is a, a definition by international law what neutrality means. I think nearly no politician in Austria is able uh, to tell it what it really means. So far it is sometimes very much misused and it has something to do with Europe. But then the uh, uh, 
uh, economic community of Europe uh, was developing and so forth, it was interested. Ah, they have possibility by cooperation to become richer and uh, uh, for sure the Austrian business community was very much connected, especially with Germany. Uh, I think we were very much depending on Germany. There was one saying, uh, if it rains uh, in Germany, we can put out the umbrella uh, because I think the influence was a very strong one which differs from today, because one of the nice results uh, of the European Union is that we are not so much depending anymore on Germany, because we had other opportunities by the European Union. And so far I may say, uh, personally I was very much engaged uh, to come to the neighbor states like Hungary, Czechoslovakia and so on and so on, and to support groups who were in favor of democracy and so on and so on. Uh, we tried, I think, to, to, to support them because we get the smell, uh, there should be a change. But may I confess, I was very much engaged in these groups, but I did not believe that in my lifetime uh, the communism will fall down. Uh, this I have to say, I was very much working on this subject, but I did not believe that we can manage it. Sometimes, nothing is for eternity, yes. But uh, if it will be quite soon, uh, no. So far, there happened in the year uh, 1989 two things. First of all, the Austrians were joining uh, the uh, European, nowadays European Union, uh, economic uh, uh, cooperation here existing, and second, the downfall of the Iron Curtain. It was really a miracle uh, with the famous sentence uh, uh, of Fukuyama, this is the end of history. That was one of the main mistakes. So far, I'm uh, ongoing critical on Fukuyama because we have so many hist much history that we are not able to consume it. Uh, and I think here you, we are in midst of the problems uh, of Europe. The first time was a very much improvement of Europe. I think they started uh, being six countries, uh, you know it, then step to nine, step to 12, uh, and then we had the huge enlargement uh, with the enlargement with the Austrians becoming 15 together with Finland and Sweden. The Norwegians kept out because uh, they were very much looking to their fishery uh, and to the oil which they found and they want to keep them for themselves. But I want to defend them. The Norwegians have a certain kind of solidarity and paying a lot for the European Union, even not being a part. Uh, and uh, after the downfall of the Iron Curtain, the real question was, and you should not uh, underestimate it, I think these countries have the feeling we have been a part of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact uh, and so on and so on. Where are we now belonging? I think there was a certain feeling, okay, to be independent, that's very nice, but we have to be connected. And I think this was the extreme important role of the European Union. It was existing, it was a perspective uh, for these countries. And also it was promised, by this we can uh, manage the difficulties you have after overcoming the communist system, the Asha Pact, uh, and so on and so on, and we will help you which was not happening from one day to the other. I think still there are huge differences existing. I think it is improving step by step, uh, but it's not yet the same level. And here we are in midst the current problems uh, of Europe. We have still these differences, and we have not only economic differences. My first criticism on Europe as a whole I think we are always dealing with the economic uh, problems, and we are not so much looking to the social, political, historian, and so on problems, we have no view. Uh, if you are going these four kilometers to Austria, and you ask an Austrian, uh, what about Hungary? Uh, do you know a little bit of history? Not even uh, somebody knows the history of 1956, uh, of, of the up, uh, uprising in Budapest. Uh, we see some older saying, ah, there came refugees and we helped them and so on and so on, which was done in a certain solidarity. But that 
the consequence out of this communist system had a deep impact, uh, deep to the roots, and we are we have not yet overcome this. Not only the economic and social differences, but also by mentality, background, and so on and so on. There was a primitive sentence. Okay, now they are a democracy. They shall work a little bit more, then it's no problem. Huh? Everything will be equal uh, here in Europe, which for sure has not yet happened. Uh, I think uh, we did several things uh, in the European Union, which were of great importance. That was for sure enlargement. I'm a fan of enlargement, uh, but the management of enlargement was sometimes difficult. I think the first move was without too much criticism. I think we took them uh, apart. Then it came out it makes difficulties to integrate them. Then the next step of enlargement, we are in midst in one of the steps concerning Southeast Europe. Uh, everybody was criticizing everything. We have to fulfill the conditions. We have to, to examine it uh, and so on and so on. We have to see what's going on here. And uh, here we are now by the development of Europe uh, stopped by this. And here I have to uh, look to a certain uh, distinctions. The members of the European Union, if you ask them what is Europe, they are saying the European Union. And they have no real feeling of those who are still outside here existing. Without any question, Russia is Europe. Uh, I think Ukraine is Europe, Moldova is Europe, and so on and so on. Uh, there's no real feeling for this. Uh, and I think there's no intention and no strong movement. We shall integrate them uh, as quick as possible. No, I think uh, for the Balkans and so on and so on, Everybody is looking more to the differences uh, and not to what is really in common. I think I'm criticizing my home country because uh, with the Balkans we have a lot in common. Huh? It was an ongoing battle between the Ottoman Empire uh, and the Austrians uh, and also the Russians who had influence and so and so. And I think uh, what is left in Bosnia-Herzegovina is a result of the old Habsburg monarchy uh, I think really great contribution. We are not proud of this because nobody knows it. I think here we have the real problem, the knowledge about what is whole Europe and what are the relations and what was done uh, and so on and so on is not anymore existing. And here we came in these phases of uh, economic differences, banking crisis and so on and so on. And by this, all these movements, which were already mentioned, uh, we are created, a kind of neo-nationalism, of populism, and so on and so on. Just to say it bluntly, neo-nationalism is old egoism. I think we are looking around, there are coming difficulties, I want to protect myself. This is neo-nationalism, that means in the really egoism. Uh, I think uh, there's a nice saying in Vienna, Everybody is thinking on him or herself. Only me, I'm thinking on myself. <laughs> that's the real tendency which are really existing. And that's hindering a common Europe. And even, I think, by this development, the differences are coming out. Differences, Brexit is one example. Uh, the British or the United Kingdom wants to decide on themselves. I think they managed it in a great way, I think, to be out of a lot of European solutions because Maggie Thatcher, I want my money back, uh, and so on and so on, managed it uh, that we got a lot of separate solutions for the United Kingdom. Uh, and they are really convinced, I think, that they have possibilities if they are on their own, even to be richer and to be more influential, uh, and so on and so on. And by this development, history is also coming back. I was listening exactly to the United Kingdom, as Theresa May said, now we have the opportunity to have a free trade zone with the Commonwealth states. Uh, remember our huge empire we had, really. What did she do, logically? Uh, they went into an airplane and was traveling to India. Uh, meeting uh, Prime Minister Modi and saying, oh, let's do a, a free trade zone in common and so on and so on. And Prime Minister Modi was saying, okay, will it work concerning free movement of labor force? 
And then she said, no, that's the reason why we are leaving the European Union. I think this is a difficulty. Nobody is anymore talking uh, that uh, a new Commonwealth of Nations might be a solution, uh, and so on and so on. And I think nobody knows what the consequence of Brexit will be if they, uh, again, standing alone. Huh? Even the difficulty starting again. We had the Good Friday Agreement uh, concerning Ireland. Now the problems are back. My Irish friends are always telling me we will start to shoot again. So far, I think things are coming back uh, here. It's only an example for the neo-nationalism, which is going back to old egoism here happening. And, uh, oh, OK. <laughs> Uh, and so far, I think that's one of the elements which are coming up. Other elements like populism is, I think we did not really mention to develop democracy in the context of Europe. I think it is the old traditional democracy which was built up since the time of French Revolution, step by step, and so on and so on. Uh, I think we need another kind of democracy. And here we are coming to the so-called modern world, to the technological development. Uh, I think what we have now by internet and uh, Facebook and 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 uh, is offering a new kind of democracy which is not really working. I remember uh, as internet came up, everybody told me, that's a victory of democracy. Now we can vote uh, every day uh, through the system. I think now we are voting that aggressiveness is brought up every day uh, and the difficulties here are really existing. And then one of the other consequences out of this, and partly I've already mentioned, that's migration. My beloved uh, Europeans, including my home country, are doing so as we have, would have the, for the first time migration. I think that's totally wrong, because if I'm looking to Austria, Austria is in the main part uh, even my home city, Vienna, a result of migration. I think uh, as I grew up, there were some parts uh, where Czech uh, language or Slovak language was really spoken. And we had some cultural tradition for that. Nobody is really aware of this. Uh, we had some ministers, colleagues of mine, with whom I was in the government, they were telling me, the parents spoke, if they were eager that I do not understand, they were speaking Czech language to each other, and so on and so on. Uh, and may I say, uh, yes, there were difficulties. At the end of the day, the monarchy was on this nationalism, and so on and so on. Even they had some good uh, solutions by legislation. For example, uh, the Moravian solution uh, concerning language was an outstanding example which is not known, uh, I think uh, there is a, a Jewish professor which grew up, who grew up in Austria and was then going to the United States. He was involved in the development of the South African uh, Constitution. Uh, and he brought in the Moravian Ausgleich uh, as a solution for the different uh, languages within South Africa. Nobody is aware in Austria about this. Uh, and I think that's for sure uh, a real pity. Uh, I think in midst this situation are we. Uh, with no real development of democracy, I think you mentioned rightly Macron and the Gilets jaunes. Uh, I think here that's one of the symbols of misunderstanding and not uh, solving the solutions. Uh, I think I want to be positive. There are a lot of achievements uh, which has happened through European Union uh, and the integration. I think uh, that we are needing uh, still, I don't know how long, no passports at borders uh, is one of the advantages. I remember my grandfather, he was traveling on construction business after the end of uh, the Danube monarchy they think, ah, oh, they told us uh, now the new situation after the First World War, the end of the monarchy, is an advantage for us. What is the advantage? Every 100 kilometers I have to show my passport. Huh? I think uh, here by Schengen uh, it was a kind of improvement, but now every Minister of Interior is working on the subject to redraw it, that you have to show, it, even if you are going to, to this uh, 
nice border station uh, at Kersek uh, uh, Rattersdorf uh, here. Uh, they're sitting an Austrian uh, policeman uh, or a military officer, if you are going here with a car, looking at you, uh, having the feeling you must be a stranger or you want to invade or, or whatever, uh, a complete nonsense which was sure existing. But the nonsense is increasing. I think don't underestimate this. I think we are really in difficulties how to develop Europe. And so far we have two different levels. It, it's a kind of division even in Europe. The one side still a lot of politicians going in the direction of more EU integration. For the moment there are no real issues happening. Uh, it is only defending what is existing, which is also not uh, really happening. And the other movement and also the parties, uh, AFD in Germany, uh, the Freiheitliche Partei in Austria, uh, Lega Nord, now it's only Lega, uh, is looking in another direction. And they are redrawing history. Uh, I think uh, one of the members of the European Parliament, an Italian, said he was speaking about Italian, Italian Dalmatia in the Italian Istria. For sure, it's a part of Croatia. Yeah? I think we have to learn to live with the realities here for sure. And the consequence is that a lot of difficulties between European countries are coming up out of these historical understandings or misunderstandings. You are in midst a country which is using it politically. The Trianon Treaty is a huge, important subject. I have to uh, defend uh, the current uh, Prime Minister here. Not only he is mentioning Trianon Treaty, all the parties. It's a real subject. And everybody is looking concerning Trianon. Uh, a real problem is I'm traveling through Europe and speaking about Europe. Nobody knows what Trianon means. Uh, it's only a, a Hungarian subject uh, here really uh, of uh, importance and discussion. And all these things are instrumentalized by politics here. Uh, which are not very much in favor of Europe. We are looking forward to the ele elections of the European Parliament. Everybody is saying it will be a swing to the right. Uh, I think right can be a lot of things. I think it will be a swing uh, in the direction of more distance to common Europe. And in a real strange way, history is coming back. <coughs> Recently, I was in Catalonia. Catalonia, uh, I have to say. Huh? Uh, I think uh, speaking with some friends I have there, they were blaming me that the Austrians are responsible uh, for Catalonia, that it is not really independent. I think it's an interesting experience. Thank you very much. Why? Ah, uh, the Spanish Habsburgs died out, and there was a war which was done uh, by Prince Charles, later on Emperor Charles VI, uh, the father of Maria Theresia. Uh, uh, but he lost the war against uh, the Bourbons uh, and the French and so on and so on. And if he would have won, Catalonia would be independent and so on and so on. It was 1712. 1712. We are writing 2019. Huh? I think here you can see what's really coming up. Uh, I think I want to close here on the subject uh, and have to touch uh, what was uh, in a brilliant way described uh, by Jean before. I think the real problem of uh, Europe is what's the role in this globalization process. I think here I have to mention some primitive figures. We Europeans are only now 7% of the global population. And in the next 20 years we will come to 4%. Clearly predicted. You hear the other figures, and we are not really able to manage it. We are still 20 to 22 percent of the economic uh, results here. China is coming up, India is coming up, and then the end. It will shrink naturally, quite normal. And from the social benefits of this world, we all Europeans are consuming 50 percent. Uh, that's not possible. And here you have the differences. And that might lead even, and I'm not happy to say so, uh, to a kind of the a Third World War. But be realistic, we are already in, in a lot of wars. 
I think we are in a trade war. Americans, China, with the Europeans forced to support the Americans by sanctions and so on and so on. Uh, we are here in a war uh, concerning uh, computer uh, and so on and so on. Uh, cyber war uh, and so on and so on. It's a long list of wars. Uh, you have only look every day to the newspapers or, or to the TV or whatever you are uh, using for your information. I think you can see the kind of wars happening. But the difficulties that the instrument for maintaining peace are shrinking in their importance. I think United Nations was mentioned, it is for shrinking in the importance. I think no influence. One of the uh, main difficulties and conf conflicts which we have in Europe, Ukraine, it broke out without the United Nations. It was never handled by the United Nations. There is no problem to get a, a certain kind of security force there because it's refused, in this case by the Russians. But I'm not quite sure if the Americans are also in favor because here we have tremendous changes. I grew up being a fan of the Americans, huh? not only by chewing gum as I was a, uh, a tiny boy, uh, but also what they brought to us, and it was extremely impressive, and I think new perspectives of the world, uh, and, and so on and so on. I think nowadays it's extremely difficult to be in favor of Americans, huh? because there's a tremendous change in America. Huh? Uh, I think uh, even the consequences, uh, I was in charge uh, on behalf of the European Union uh, of Southeast Europe, Stability Pact for Southeast Europe. Uh, I gained a lot of friends uh, uh, in the uh, State Department, uh, in foundations, in think tanks, and so on and so on. Now they are all out. Because in the time of Trump, we don't wear, want to work uh, the left. They are elsewhere, and so on and so on. I think of the difficulty, I'm still visit, uh, visiting professor at the University of North Carolina, and if I'm going there, last November I did it, it I was writing a lot of emails, I want to meet you, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the answers were, I have left, I'm elsewhere, and so on and so on, no chance, uh, which I think is a real pity. I think so far, Europe has to learn in a certain way to stand alone. That's the one side of the Atlantic. The other side is Russia. I think the mistake the Europeans did is not to manage in the time of Yeltsin and the first time uh, of uh, our beloved current leader of Russia uh, to come to some trading and to come closer. I think here it was an idiotic consequence out of NATO because uh, the Americans were looking, let's put up NATO posts uh, along the new Russian border. Even by the agreement, it is the discussion, was it an agreement or was it not an agreement, uh, by the changes of borders and uh, by uh, the reunification of Germany, uh, not to do it by NATO. But it has happened really, and so far I think we have not the right ways, and we are all looking to sanctions. Sanctions, uh, and uh, I was in charge uh, concerning the sanctions towards Yugoslavia uh, here. Sanctions are creating corruption. I think, are creating oligarchs, without any doubt. There are coming up some people who are able to go around to make a very good business, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, where I say I'm trying for the rest of my lifetime to create this discussion about sanctions and so on and so on, I'm not succeeding. I think there are a lot of people being happy that there are certain sanctions. Uh, they are not confessing it, but uh, that's one of the realities. This is a short description of the situation of the Europeans in which we are in midst. Any solutions? Maybe we are learning out of this situation. Uh, my father, shocking enough for me, said always, uh, you have to understand we need every 70 years a, a war, then we are learning out that it will improve. But the possibilities of warfare in these days are horrible in reality. And I think uh, even by the fact that it is always uh, said uh, the European Union is a peace, peace project, 
I think the real business now is wo uh, weapons production. Uh, even we small Austrians uh, are gaining a lot out of it. Clock pistols uh, are, we are selling. Nobody is aware in Austria what importance it has uh, because uh, Mr. Clock, or I think the whole family, spending a lot for social and cultural things, therefore it's okay that Clock is good. I think we have no real discussions about this subject. What means peace nowadays for Europe and what might be the consequences? Uh, here we are amidst a very shaky area. And I think hopefully what Sean uh, has proposed here, uh, analyzing here the different uh, problems, it might happen uh, that after the conflicts in Syria, Yemen, and then the end, long list, I think it might overcome also to Europe because we have a lot of problems which are also uh, existing. Uh, I'm still involved concerning the Balkans, uh, China conflicts. We have the success story. The name of North Macedonia. Uh, uh, I think it is a tiny result. The Macedonians are two million. That's it. Uh, uh, and hopefully it's sustainable, which is here existing. We have bigger problems for sure, uh, and that's within. Uh, the realization of this shaky social uh, situation is not really happening. Uh, I think that's also a pro problem of the media, of the discussions. It's a problem of science, uh, may I say. We have a lot of uh, political scientists uh, and we have a lot of uh, think tanks writing big, big uh, papers and so on and so on. But what we are really missing for the future of Europe are do tanks. Uh, people are doing something. The problem of democracy and the quality of politicians is a key problem for us Europeans. Uh, if I'm mentioning it, that is always said, but elsewhere the politicians are also not very good. And then always Trump is managed. Uh, but this is not solving our problem. I think we have to have a discussion in, for sure in this direction. Hopefully a winter seminar of UNESCO is able to manage it in the right direction. Uh, we have to be aware that it is extremely important, not only for us European, I think it has a global impact yeah. by the fact that Europe is only a small part of the world, which we have to say. Uh, look to the globe and then you can see, uh, we had one a philosopher who said, Europe is only the appendix of Asia. I think let's hope that we are an independent part and not an appendix. Thank you very much for your patience.